Hello everyone, this is DA from E Academy and in the previous video we have derived a specific shape functions of a quadratic element and we're still in our second step of the finite element method that is the derivation of element level equations. And today we will take a step back and see where we will sort these things out and proceed to the next step of the finite element method. So let's start. We know we have talked about this general differential equation in one of our previous videos that this uh, differential equation is a very versatile differential equation and we will be using this differential equation specifically when we are talking about the finite element method. So we have specific problems by just changing a, c and f. The domain is from 0 to L and these two are the boundary conditions of this differential equation. Now we have also we have also talked about the residual of this differential equation and you know what is the de definition of the residual because there is nothing on the right hand side of this so this is also equal to the residual of itself and when we are in the weak form we know how we can use the residual and plug in to do the integration by parts so I'm just going to write the product that we can get after doing the integration by parts of this differential equation so this is the product that we can get after having integration by parts. Now the point is, this is the domain from A to B, and I have wrote the domain of x from 0 to L. Again, we have, we are in the second step, and we are actually deriving the element level equations. And in the previous video, we have talked about how we, how we can use the local coordinate system in order to get, uh, in order to derive or get the very intuitive idea of the whole structure and then in the end convert back into the global coordinate system uh, in the assembly phase. When we have a road of a certain, in the, in the local coordinate system, we know x bar is, is zero from one end and x bar is equal to actually the length of that element on the other end. So the length of an element is h e. e is in the subscript representing that this length is, this is h representing the eth length of that element so that is why a would be zero in that case and b would be the length of an element and here as well so the next step would be we have to make pairs of those elements that have a combination of shape function and displacement function or we can say that w and u so this would be a pair where we have both w and u this would be a pair when we have both w and u, but this wf is where we don't have any displacement function. And this is, this is an element that we have only weight function. So we have to pair them. So we have to pair these two things and we have to pair these two things in order to make a connection with the direct method, in order to make a connection with the weak form, in, in order to uh, make correspondence with the stiffness matrix and the force vector. So what we can do, we are going to make pair of these two things and we're going to pair these two elements. So this thing is on the left side of the equation and this thing on the right hand side of the equation. I have put E on the superscript of W and F to meant to specify that we are in the element level equation and we are talking about the eth element because we are talking about the eth element in the local coordinate system. Now we have to recall the approximation function that is u. We know what is u. u is, is the summation of u i and psi i. So in u, because we are going to approximate this uh, differential equation that is actual u, we have to replace u with summation u i n psi i. So that would be the case because we have replaced u by the summation of u j and psi j. And because we have w, not psi, in our equation, which means that we have to approximate this w with the psi that we have used as a shape function. And secondly, we have to plug u, u i psi j. So this 
the derivative of w with respect to the x we have d psi j by the x why j because we know we have this u approximation where j is from 1 to n and it is representing how many nodes per element that we have either we have a linear element or quadratic element or whatever so this u uj psi j this c remains the same because this is a constant and it is specified according to the situation that we have this w is w i why this is i w is replaced by psi i because this was all already in that equation and this is u so u i psi j and so does the other thing and we have also used uh, this boundary condition here because this a du by dx on, on the other end that is on the other end of the bar is q naught so that is why it would be q j in that case now it is it is very important to know what actually is w thing uh, we have talked in the very first or two videos where we interpret what is the meaning of the shear function the shear function is, is actually telling us about the variation if the node is fixed at some point or have a certain value at some point the variation would be zero either the value of displacement is zero or the value of displacement is two or three either way the value of the displacement is fixed at a certain point so that is why the value of w that is actually representing the variation would be equal to zero now we comes the point where we have to make a correspondence between the direct method the weak form the whole thing is actually representing the stiffness matrix if we take the u that is displacement function out of this integral because we have u in this form as well we have u in this form as well so we can easily take out u from this integral so this would be a stiffness matrix time the displacement vector and the other side would be the force vector right thing like this so k that is stiffness matrix i and j because we have both i and j in it u that is j only j because we have the displacement function in the approximation function and the force i and j are here representing the nodal values which means that it depends on how many nodes in an element we have for example, we have a linear element, which means that we have two nodes, one and two per element. Then J vary from one to two, I vary from one to two. There are four possibilities for I and J combination. They both are equal. And when I is one, J is two, or when I is two, J is one. So because of the four possibilities, we have four entries in a matrix which implies that for a stiffness matrix we have two cross two matrix for a displacement vector we have a column vector and same case for a vector for a force vector we have a column vector but in case we have three nodes per element so the stiffness matrix would be three cross three as so we are in the element level equation we have to specify kij in each level of an element so we have to extract kij from this integral and we have to make a general matrix out of this integral so let's extract kij from this integral by taking ui uj sorry by taking uj out common out of this integral is kij summation a this element this derivative and because this is kij we have to take this out and u out of this so this is kij now we have to specify values of i and j in this according to specify the stiffness matrix but if we look at the rudiments of this kij here is the derivative of psi i and this is the derivative of psi j and this is psi i and psi j so here in order to proceed we have to specify the number of elements so let's say we have a linear element where n is equal to 2 which implies that we have to use psi 1 and psi 2 for the linear elements that we have derived psi 1 for the linear element was 1 minus x bar by h and the psi 2 was x bar by h we have derived this psi bar in part 3 
of the finite element method. So because we have to take the derivative of this, first we, we have to say, let's suppose i is 1 and j is equal to 1, which means that this would be d psi 1 by dx and d psi 1 by dx, psi 1 and psi 1. We don't have to use this when we have psi 1 and j1, we only have to use this. And if we take the derivative of this, psi 1 with respect to the x, we have 0 because 1 is constant. And for this, we have only minus 1 by h. We have to plug this here. And we have to plug this 1 minus x, h bar by x e. And let's solve this to make a specific k for 1, 1. So we have from 0 to the length of an element. So here a, this integral that we know is 1 minus, this derivative as we know is 1 minus the length. Because it's the same thing, so 1 minus the length plus c, we know these two things. So it is 1 minus x bar by the length squared and dx bar. So this thing and this thing is k1, 1, 1. So after solving and taking the integral, we would end up with this k1, 1, 1, a by h plus ch by 3. So here a and c uh, are constants, and it would be specified when we have a certain problem. It asks to solve all of the four values, or the three values remaining, and the point is the value for 1, 2 and 2, 1 would be the same because we have talked about in our previous videos of direct and the weak form that the stiffness matrix is a symmetric matrix. So after solving Kij for the linear element, when we have J1 and when we have both two values, I, I is equal to 2 and J is equal to 2, the solve uh, stiffness matrix for the linear element would be like this. So this is the matrix the stiffness got after solving all of the four values out to constant a and h and c and h from the second entries with a simplified form where we next video we will be talking about how we can solve the force vector just like the stiffness matrix that we have and we see what is the combination that we can get after having a specified stiffness matrix a specified force vector as well so this is for now. Looking for more such videos, then you can subscribe to this channel or to watch more upcoming videos. We will meet in the next video. Till then, take care. Goodbye.